Um, so um, I'd like to talk about uh, 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 that, um, properties uh, uh, for the axisymmetric Euler equations, and uh, my, uh, I'd like to start with personal uh, motivation. Um, so I'm. Um, um, so I'm. Uh, um, I uh, I was. Uh, um, studying uh, the motion of vortex filaments for, for some time. Um, and a vortex filament is, um, is a curve in R3 around which the uh, vorticity sharply concentrates. Yeah, or in other words, um, the velocity um, rotates very quickly uh, around uh, some curve um, in the space. And then the question is, okay, so uh, suppose, suppose we, have, uh, we have an ideal fluid uh, described by the Euler equation. What is the, um, can we describe the motion of this curve as, a, as, a, as an object, um, um, <coughs> as a good dimension two object? Um, so there's, there has been a conjecture by Davios um, In 1906, uh, Darius was a, a student of Levi Mita, and he uh, did some formal analysis uh, uh, predicting that this curve would evolve with uh, what is called the binormal curvature flow. Uh, I, I do not want to go into into details, but in fact, it um, uh, it has not been proved uh, uh, rigorous, and uh, um, one is quite far from uh, proving. Uh, a general statement like saying that uh, uh, suppose uh, uh, vorticity is concentrated closely around the curve, then this curve, and uh, the velocity is described by the Euler equation, then uh, this curve evolves with the binomial uh, curvature flow. So there's there's a there's some uh, result, uh, a very conditional result uh, uh, by uh, Bob Girard and myself. Um, it's from 17, which, which uh, gives a very weak answer to this. So th therefore the question is, okay, if this is too hard, um, what can we do? So can we, can we consider some simplified setting? And there are, I would say, two very, very uh, natural, um, natural settings to, uh, to restrict to. So the first one is, suppose we have one or two very straight vortex filaments. And now we're interested into um, um, how these two um, <coughs> interact. So if, if this situation is, is uh, very boring, we only have a single one because the sustainment will not move. But if we have two or more, then they will interact and, and, and move. So in, um, in this scenario, um, one is essentially restricting to a two-dimensional setting because uh, if this is the z-axis, the vertical axis, uh, the velocity field is constant, right? <coughs> so I, let's say this is, this is like a uh, planar symmetry. Yeah. A typical example is a hurricane, yeah? Or you, uh, uh, if you uh, um, consider, um, you pull the, uh, the top in, uh, uh, after taking a bath, then you also see like this. This vortex and it's also moving, and uh, so this is these are these kind of objects. And the other uh, the other setting, um, which is uh, very natural to consider, is um, um, circular filaments. We are describing, for instance, uh, uh, smoke rings, um, which you observe uh, not only uh, when uh, performed by some smokers, but also. Uh, um, for instance, uh, considering a volcano, yeah? if, if, if it's erupting, you sometimes see very perfect smoke rings uh, um, rising up. And I mean, then you can also uh, look for some uh, YouTube uh, movies and see, uh, um, yeah, uh, watching dolphins playing with these kind of objects. So, <coughs> so but I would say that so here, here the object, uh, the situation is uh, said. This is the z-axis and. Uh, uh, that, then, then we are restricting uh, to, to circular objects, and here the uh, velocity is uh, uh, rotating uh, around, uh, around these curves. 
So this is this is a, a cylindrical symmetry. Yeah, or an axial symmetry. This is what is usually called axial symmetry. <laughs> Just to be clear, you remind me so the chirality of the spinning determines the direction in which it ascends or descends. I'm sorry? The, the, the direction of uh, spinning determines the direction of ascent or descent. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. And the smaller ones go faster than the larger ones. Yes. yes. Okay, so um, for this reason, um, I would say um, it is. Um, both both settings are very natural to consider. Yeah? It's not now uh, that we're looking for some uh, um, some uh, um, well simplification just to, to prove some theorems. This is uh, considering Euler or Navier Stokes equation in this setting really uh, has a physical sense. <coughs> so if if we consider the velocity field, three um, D velocity field U x y z, then uh, in this in this uh, um, Situation U is a velocity field depending uh, on x and on y, and uh, it's also two-dimensional. Mm -hmm. This is this is this uh, uh, a symmetry, uh, symmetry assumption. And here we assume that it has a radial part and a vertical part, but no angular part. Um, so in both cases we have two-dimensional objects. Okay, so let's let's see what what is happening to the, uh, with the Euler equations. <clears throat> and let me write down the Euler equation right away in vorticity form. <clears throat> so the Euler equation in vorticity in three D. Um, they uh, consist of two parts, and the, the first part um, tells me that vorticity is transported along the velocity field or along the flow. And the second part, in the, in the three-dimensional case, um, is vortex stretching. So uh, a <coughs> vortex can be stretched on the turret. Yeah. The first term is easy. It's just a transport equation or a transport operator. Now we know very uh, precisely how to, how to deal with this term. And this, this is the term which causes mathem mathematical problems. I mean, this is also the term which, uh, uh, which makes the equation interesting. Yeah? But uh, from a mathematical point of view, um, this, uh, this is the more difficult point. So um, here u can be obtained by, uh, from omega via the three-dimensional view of Savard law. I'm not writing down the kernel here. So, but this, uh, this is really a closed equation, at least formally. So this is v of so well. And when we do that in three dimensions, uh, of course, we get that the velocity field is divergence free as it should be. Yeah? Um, so what is for planar Euler? Planar Euler, so planar Euler is very easy because um, the velocity, uh, the, the vorticity field, in fact, consists only of uh, of one component, um, so it's a, uh, the vorticity is a scalar quantity, and uh, if we were, um, write down or if we uh, uh, compute the evolution equation for the vorticity, then we see that the vortex stretching term disappears. Mm -hmm. So no vortex stretching. stretching. 
And this is the reason why, uh, for some reason, the 2D or the planner Euler equation is easy. I mean, you know, we, we cannot show everything, but uh, it's much better understood than the 3D case. Okay, what happened in, in the axisymmetric case? Uh, in the axisymmetric case, the vorticity is still a scalar quantity. Now, this time, um, it points into the angular direction. But the, uh, the vortex stretching term survives. So here, um, we should write uh, ur uz dot dr dz omega theta. And then on the right hand side, we have uh, omega theta times ur over r. So the radial part of the velocity here uh, survives. And this is this is an important part. So, like uh, Stephen mentions, uh, if you consider the the evolution of uh, vortex rings, smaller rings are faster than uh, than uh, than uh, uh, bigger ones. And so, suppose you have a small ring underneath a bigger ring. Um, then the small ring is catching up the other one. Then they have an interaction. They reverse the, uh, the bigger one. And the smaller one uh, gets slower. Thus, it gets uh, larger. This, uh, the larger one gets smaller. And that's uh, uh, faster. And then they have to play this game of leapfrogging. And this is only possible to this uh, due to this uh, uh, vortex stretching behavior. Um, okay. So what uh, what should also be mentioned is. Um, um, so U, the velocity field, can still be recovered, of course. So here it's a, um, the two-dimensional Dio Savart kernel, and um, it's divergence-free. That happens. Uh, that is different also on the uh, on the axisymmetric level. Due to the change of variables, we're losing uh, we're losing the um, divergence-free condition. So um, we can still recover um, um, u by the Savart law. So now u r u z um, can be recovered. Um, Theta, but u is not preserved. But what is preserved is r times u. R is, is divergence free. Yeah. So if if you if you multiply this out, the divergence of u is minus u r over r. Yeah. So also this uh, the appearance appearance of uh, or the, the lack of uh, um, the divergence free um, condition makes the equation. Much more difficult. By the separator, you mean dr dz? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will, yeah, of course. So this is, sorry, also this is uh, dr ur plus uh, dz uz plus ur over r is zero. Mm -hmm. So um, in uh, in either case, um, omega is still a, a preserved quantity. So also in the in the um, axisymmetric case, the equation can be rewritten in such a way that omega satisfies the conservation law. Yeah, but it's not transported. Huh? It's, uh, there's this additional stretching term. So from now on, I will write omega um, omega is uh, uh, omega z or omega as omega theta, depending on uh, whether I consider uh, the, the flat case or the or the cylindrical set. Okay, so. Um,
let's let's start uh, or let's let's consider again the two D uh, Euler equation for a moment. Or I, I try to say always the planar case because also the cylindrical setting is two dimensional. So planar Euler dt omega plus omega zero. Um, here we have, can write down, um, at least formally, because of the fact that U is divergence three, um, a bunch of uh, um, conservation laws. So, for in fact, for every beta, C1, bounded, with bounded derivatives, whatever we want, um, we have that uh, uh, the chain rule applies, and we have uh, that uh, beta of omega satisfies exactly the same equation. Formally, yeah, we're just talking, talking formally. So this is this is what is usually called, uh, or in the spirit of the Panavions, called uh, uh, renormalization. Yeah, so we can say, or it's, uh, 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 solution is called a distribution, uh, 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 renormalized solution, if uh, if this identity is valid. So if the uh, the chain rule holds uh, uh, for every uh, suitable beta. So, and in particular, choosing beta to be um, <coughs> sorry, like uh, uh, some uh, uh, some polynomial, <coughs> we find that uh, um, any LP norm is preserved by the flow. Yeah, and what we can also do, of course, uh, um, 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 what is what should be also preserved in two D and three uh, D on the formal level is energy, the energy. So U T L two on the formal level. Okay, so um, the first question to ask is: um, So, I'm, I'm, what I want to do is now I want to I want to study the Euler equation um, in a in a low uh, regularity setting in the sense that let's assume that omega has uh, uh, is in some LP space with, with a low uh, um, order of integrability. So, suppose uh, omega LP. <coughs> And then the first question we have to ask is when um, when is uh, does this equation make sense? And it makes sense if at least on, uh, in the distributional uh, on the distributional level if the product of u and omega is integrable. And then you can do some um, some uh, superlative embedding theory. So if omega is an LP, um, well, first way this is uh, first uh, Carlo and Sigmund. So if, if omega is an LP, then U is in W1P, at least if P is bigger than 1. <coughs> And uh, so then we have Sobolev embedding. Uh, U is in uh, L P prime. Yeah, and then we have to evaluate if U is in, in this L P prime, omega is in L P. Um, when is this product in um, in uh, L one? So one over P plus one over P prime bigger or equal than one if P is bigger or equal to four thirds. So if P is bigger than four thirds. Uh, we can write down the uh, uh, 2D vorticity equation in distributional form and uh, um, give some meaning to it. If P is smaller than 4 thirds, we can still uh, introduce or define um, the vorticity equation, but then we take this as a definition. Hmm? So for 
p smaller than four thirds this is a definition. Bounded beta. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, C1, the bound about the derivatives, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, so then, and then uh, we have a solution to the, uh, then we are interested in the solution. So this is okay. okay, so now the question is um, when is a solution, um, when is a solution to the Euler equation? Um, a distributional solution. So when, when um, is it uh, um, satisfying uh, these families of uh, conservation laws, and in particular, when is the LP norm preserved by the evolution? <coughs> so that that would be in general would be uh, probably wrong, but uh, you can you can look for particular solutions. So. For, the most physical, the most physical solutions to consider are uh, vanishing viscosity solutions. So, question is: Are so first question are uh, vanishing viscosity solutions renormalized? And uh, the second question. Is um, um, do vanishing viscosity solutions preserve the kinetic energy? <coughs> so the first question has been addressed in the planner case by Lopez Lopez Matsukato? No. Um, uh, but you consider this. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah no, I mean the first question. So, the first. Sorry? Yeah, that was uh, uh, PV that was smaller than 2. So, I guess uh, uh, there's this paper. Um, well, this is more or less just a remark or an observation. Uh, uh, um, uh, so, Hilo um, uh, Matsukato um, proved uh, or commented on the case P bigger than four thirds. Yeah, let me put it like this. Um, for um, P between one and four thirds. Uh, the, uh, the problem was settled by uh, uh, Kipper and Spirito. I guess uh, 2015. And then uh, the case P equal to one was uh, uh, solved jointly uh, with Kipper uh, Spirito and Camilla Nobili. Probably the last year, no problem. I don't know. 18. Um, and the interesting, the interesting observation here was that go, does not go through uh, using um, depend on your renormalization theory. But uh, in fact, what was needed was like a, a quantitative or direct. Um, Theory from the transport equation, or for continuity equations, and that was uh, developed by myself uh, in, um, in analogy to the Kipper de Lattice theory for the ODEs. Uh, this was 17 plus, uh, uh, some harmonic analysis tools. Uh, Developed uh, by Bouchy and Kripper. 
Does this include measures or just L1? Just L1. Yeah. Uh, okay, so. Um, okay, so. Uh, right. So, I, okay, so um, I wanted to talk about the axis symmetric case. So let's turn back to this. Um, <coughs> So, the, as I said, the vorticity equation solves uh, is a continuity equation for omega, and uh, um, the divergence, in fact, was not preserved, uh, not, not zero, but uh, has this additional uh, um, term. And uh, this observation um, leads um, to the fact that. Uh, um, while omega satisfies the continuity equation, the uh, quantity that is transported by the flow is um, the ratio of omega and the radial, uh, radial distance. So what is conserved, uh, what is adapted is the quantity omega over r. So for omega over r, we have uh, a transport equation. Okay. So now I said, um, so um, the question is now, is there some analogous uh, uh, quantity or analogous uh, uh, result to be expected as the conservation of uh, the LP norm that we have for the 2D or for the flat case? And the answer is yes. Um, if, if you remember that um, I said U is not divergence free, but R times U is divergence free. Yeah, so if you mu multiply, um, the equation by R, then you have a, a divergence free vector field, vector field over that, and then you can uh, use um, uh, uh, um, the chain rule and observe that beta C plus R U. I mean, this, comp this computation is valid in any case. Um, so this is zero, and uh, that has to be a preserved uh, quantity because uh, you can write this again in divergence-free form. <coughs> yeah. So what is preserved is um, is the quantity uh, um, C P mu uh, multiplied by the radial component, and I write it over the half space the R. Z is the same as, sorry, C0, PR, PR, Z. So this is the quantity which replaces omega uh, uh, in, the, in the flat case. And uh, moreover, um, just, not, just a remark, this is, this is, this is also a natural uh, uh, measure because this is just the three-dimensional Lebesgue uh, measure restricted to axisymmetric modulo the factor of 2 pi, restricted to uh, uh, axisymmetric functions. Yeah. So we can also write this as B e R3, R3. Yeah. modulo constants. <coughs> okay, so um, then um, one can ask, of course, the same question. Whether, uh, whether um, the equation makes sense um, in, a, in a distributional form. And uh, the argument is the same as, as, uh, as in, in, the, in the planar case. So suppose now that C is a solution in LP, R3, for some P bigger than 1. The question is, does the vorticity equation make sense? So we can uh, consider the, the same object. Uh, du Calde und Sigmund, if you want, plus Muckenhaupt theory. Yeah, to understand also the weights in a, in a rigorous sense. And, uh, um, I mean, and at least you have to only argue locally. In the end, you will end up with, uh, with the same with the same uh, uh, um, value of p, so if p is bigger than four thirds, also the axis symmetric. Uh, so this this formulation makes sense. One of these, 
And if not, then we take uh, um, this as a definition of this functional solution. Okay, so let's, uh, let us ask the same question as before. Um, when, when, when is a solution um, to the axisymmetric Euler equation a renormalized solution? And also here we consider the, uh, so the, we, we ask the question for vanishing viscosity uh, limits. Yeah, and despite the fact that um, if, if we consider, um, so this, this, is, this, is, this equation is not exactly in a, a dependent loss form, right? So if we, if we consider it with the, without the R, then uh, the velocity field is, uh, or this quantity C is vectored by, by a velocity field which has unbounded divergence globally. Yeah, so therefore that does not fit into this dependent loss framework, but once you multiply by R, and this uh, a, a multi a multiple of, uh, uh, in front of the time derivative does not really change the arguments in, in the dependent loss theory. So therefore, copying more or less uh, uh, this, uh, very, very much the same arguments of dependent loss, you see that uh, C is a renormalized solution when uh, uh, when uh, uh, U is uh, when U is Sobolev, so in particular. When you uh, uh, when omega is yeah so this is this is the first observation this is really an observation so so uh, this is uh, ongoing uh, nobody uh, um, this is okay for p bigger than one. Um, and the case B equal to 1 does not work, or at least uh, not with the same method as, as over there, because really this, this quantitative theory uh, kind of uh, does not, uh, uh, does, uh, it's not good, good for adding some particular additional weights. And even though this is just a mild uh, change of the equation, uh, this, uh, the, the theorem is very rigid. Quantitative theory, so, um, P, uh, P equal one is, is unclear how to deal with, how to deal with this. So just so the, the problem with P is, P is uh, one is that U is not in W one Q for some Q. Yeah, but uh, <coughs> the statement is that gradient U is uh, uh, a singular integral of an uh, L one function. Yeah? So this is a singular kernel. And this is an L one. And in this setting, the Panamian kind of theory does not uh, apply. This is the this is the problem. Okay. So what about uh, what about energy conservation? So energy, of course, is kinetic energy. Um, the the argument in um, in the in the flat case uh, is quite easy. So the here I'm um, let's consider the, the case uh, p between one and two. Um, on the torus, this uh, um, this is uh, done very nicely in the paper of. Uh, I always forget the ones about Cheskitov. Like this? Okay, well, I've heard them. If not, it's a permutation. <laughs> <laughs> Two eyes. Okay. And um, then uh, a Lopez Lopez, yeah? And the argument goes as follows. So we want to we want to compute. Uh, we want to see uh, if the energy is uh, um, energy is conserved. So what is what is certainly clear. So we take we take a solution to the Navier Stokes equation. And um, 
in this regularity framework, we have an, um, an energy identity. Yeah. In 2D, uh, this, this is an identity. So we integrate and find that uh, at time t, the difference of the velocity of the, kinetic, uh, of the kinetic energy to the initial kinetic energy is just minus 2 nu integral 0 t right nu s dx. These are all L2 norms. And this is not negative, this difference. So what we have to show is that this goes to zero, if it goes to zero, and then we can deduce that the kinetic energy is preserved. Okay, so now in, uh, in 2D, it's very easy to see that this, in fact, is nothing but um, the vorticity in the R2 norm. And then uh, um, what, what is true is that the vorticity satisfies uh, the same uh, uh, integrability improving estimate as the heat equation. So this is bounded by 1 over mu t, uh, sorry, mu s, s is not available, um, omega naught, lp, and now I have to look up the, the right exponent, so you, which you can figure out by the dimensional arguments. Of, 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 uh, two p two p minus one. Two. Yeah, this is this is really just uh, same for the as for the heat equation. If you start with uh, this is which only is well if, if p is smaller than two. Yeah, so in integrability is improved with a, with a, with a rate that you can compute explicitly. So if you integrate this, then you will find minus some constant times. Uh, um, uh, mu t, okay, so what is it? This is uh, 2 times 1 minus 1 over p, if I did not do any mistakes. Yeah? So here you see it's essential that p is greater than 1 because then this quantity is positive. You can set uh, nu to 0, sorry, this would be a nu, and then this goes to zero, and from this uh, you easily deduce uh, that the kinetic energy. Yes, please. There's also another part of keys, which is that the nu converges strongly to the Euler solution. Can you say again, please? <coughs> Sorry. There's one more important part of keys, which is that the, the L2 norm of the nu converges to the yeah, yeah, okay. norm of the Euler. And that's only for keys, which is the one. This is also only two for keys. Yes. Ah, okay, okay. I, okay, I was not aware of this. Yes, of course. So this goes to u of t and L2. Right. Well, okay, I thought uh, I, I There's had There's one not... more author. Bitte? There's also one more author. There's Finkoy. Yeah. No, ach so. <laughs> so this is okay. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, Right. Okay. So, uh, what what is what's what's going on for um, for the axisymmetric case? So, for the axisymmetric case, um, the same kind of calculation um, uh, does not work because uh, in the axisymmetric case, the kinetic energy uh, carries a weight. Yeah. So, the kinetic energy in, in uh, you still have to consider the, the, the three-dimensional quantity. So the kinetic energy is really uh, is really this object integrated over the half space. Okay. So um, under the uh, regularity assumptions or integrability assumptions uh, about Xs and LP, you can still prove uh, um, that. Um, the uh, uh, um, energy equality holds true on the level of, of the Navier-Stokes equation. And therefore, if we integrate this, uh, uh, we have the same. So this is axisymmetric. So this identity is, of course, also the same. But now let me write it. Uh, down in integrated form, so this is 
uh, um, gradient u mu s r dr dz yes yeah. so this is uh, and square okay so far the same you can do some calculations and see that this can be replaced by omega r square uh, integrated against uh, uh, the distance, but what is not, not working, at least it's uh, totally unclear to me, how to get such uh, uh, integrality improving estimates. So that is, that is the issue. So for uh, uh, C0 in LP, yeah, is, there, can, is it possible to prove something like L2 bounded by that is. So dimensional arguments already tell you that cannot be true. It cannot always be true. Yeah? So therefore, that, that immediately leads to some restrictions. What is true is that this estimate holds if we, I replace L. Oh, oh, this is the three-dimensional object, of course. Yeah? And this is also. The same, however, is true when I replace omega, omega, omega by C. Yeah, then I get uh, some exponent mu t, and I'm really not sure if I want to have a more general statement. Yes, I want to have the F u norm here. So, and uh, uh, then the dk estimate is like 3 over 2, 1 minus p minus 1 over q times, times the norm. Yeah. So this, is, this can be proved, if, uh, uh, but, but not on the level of omega. At least, uh, I, I'm not saying that this is wrong, but uh, I do not know how to prove it. So, I'm almost finished, so for continue here. So um, the, the solution, or in order to, to prove something, um, is uh, um, we, we assumed in addition that, um, at least on the level of, uh, of, the, um, of the L1 norm, we have a good dk at infinity. So R2 plus alpha the R the Z uh, is bounded initially. If this is uh, bounded initially, then you can also prove that it's, in, uh, it's, it's bounded during the evolution. So if, if we have this good uh, um, uh, DK, and uh, alpha is can be quite large. In fact, um, um, alpha is an alpha of P, of course, and uh, this is zero if p is bigger than three over two, and it goes to infinity if p goes to six over five, which already indicates that we necessarily have to restrict to the setting p bigger than six over five. <coughs> when we have this in addition, then we find an estimate uh, of this sort uh, uh, with, with, a, with an alpha uh, uh, which, which, is, um, which is smaller than one, so that uh, uh, um, we can conclude uh, with, a, with the same kind of, uh, of argument that you have to conservation. Mm -hmm. So in this case, if this is the case, then the energy is Good so right. This is Thank you very much. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, so there is a result or series of results by Galay and Shkara yes. on other slopes in actually symmetric case, mm -hmm. and they are able to show even for initial uh, vorticities being measured, which is somehow relevant to, yeah. to the circles, 
uh, that you have um, global in time existence and decays of L1 nodes. Yes. Uh, does it help you in, 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 in uh, pushing the measures? Because, uh, well, I mean, we're not even uh, at L1 level, right? So, I mean, we use, we use these results uh, in order to get uh, um, this, uh, these decay estimates. Uh, but, uh, um, so, yeah, okay, I was not very precise. I, uh, I would also maybe consider my solution to the, the sense of Galisfera, which has all these properties in the right decay behavior. And, and, uh, um, then you can prove something like this in an option. <coughs> so, uh, I just wanted to comment also that Critical exponent for the, uh, the combat embedding of W160 yeah. L2, which you need, the, so you get a strong convergence at the loss. <coughs> you also need. Ah, good. Also, yeah. then this is the bottom line. Okay. Yes. Okay, so we. Yeah. Thanks for the comment. Yeah. <coughs> Vorticity is concentrated on some epsilon level around the curve. Um, and it stays concentrated in the evolution, and then this curve is close to a curve evolving by the binary curve flow. And then you can quantify this. And you also, which is nice about this, this result, you have quite low regularity assumptions on, uh, on the vorticity, I guess L1 or maybe some local space. Is there anything known about the uniqueness of renormalized solutions? I mean, as in the, uh, I, mean, I would say this, this is potentially harder than the, the flat case. So. No, even uh, the, the flat, I mean, the 2D flat, but you assume renormalization. I mean, uh, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the other question. Okay, so if there are no more questions, thank you very much.